step-by-step -step SEO training course for 2024. How to optimize web forms. In this video session, we're going to see the importance of web form optimization. Whether you're a local business owner or you're operating an e-commerce site, almost all websites have web forms. First, rule of web form optimization is have minimum amount of information that you need to fulfill your ultimate objective. That means you want to make your web forms as easy and as simple as possible. Because sometimes some business owners, including e-commerce site owners, they want to use the web form to save time. As in, they end up asking 20 different questions that a user needs to fill in before they can send a form. You don't want to do that unless it's somehow absolutely necessary, right? So the first rule for web form optimization is have your contact link prominently throughout your menu structure. Also, anticipate how people interact with websites. That means if you're a local business owner and you're growing your business website, then it's more than likely that people will end up finding you from Google or from other sources and they end up landing on different parts of your website. And the user interaction obviously usually scrolls down the page and your contact details is very important at that moment. And having contact options prominently throughout your web page elements is the first step as well. Then you want to use the technology available. Make sure the web forms ask minimal of questions so that it's easier for people to contact. Because remember, before they contact you, they may have perhaps even bought something from your e-commerce site, if you operate an e-commerce site, perhaps read about your business details. So they've already spent a bit of time. And at that moment, when they're ready to contact you, then usually they may ring you or they may use web forms, right? So then you want to make that final step as easy as possible the final step of interaction as easy as possible. Also, web forms moving forward, you can use the latest HTML5 technologies. So I'll show you a couple of them. First, with the form fields, you can use required, which is an HTML5 web form element. So your input fields can have required as keyword. I'll just zoom in here so that you see what that looks like. So now that's a client side validation. So before the form is validated on the server side or perhaps using scripts and so on, you can utilize the latest validation technologies because that assists the, the interaction. Then what else can we do? Let's take a look at another feature. We've got autocomplete. You can check that out. Perhaps want to utilize it. Autocomplete actually is a great optimization technique, particularly for mobile device usage as an interaction. Because on mobile devices, it is a little bit different to interact with web forms compared to a desktop or a laptop device. So your job is to make that interaction as simple as possible. And autocomplete then will allow the person who may have filled another form on some other website perhaps, and their smartphone particularly have their details, perhaps their 
you know, Google account is associated with their smartphone and they sync things. If that's the case, then autofill will allow the latest technology to quickly autofill. So they don't need to type um, certain fields such as name, perhaps phone number and an email address as well. Okay. Now, also, you can utilize CSS to provide visual cues. Let's imagine this scenario. Let's see what happens when I focus into that form element. Let's take a look. I'll put this down so that you can see. You see how that color changed? Let's go into this field. See how that color changed? That means you can utilize form. Let's do this. I'll show you the code itself, just in case you may want to utilize that. Using Chrome Developer Toolbar, you can hover over, as in inspect, as in right click into the field, then press on inspect, because it'll take you to the element here. Then right click, you can say force state, let's say focus. Now we're focused on. And here is the CSS that's making that um, outline of the field a little bit different color. So surely you can change the color if you want to match your branding colors. You can explore the web developer toolbar accordingly and so on. Okay. So focus event, this is the CSS rules that's making that work. Okay. So that's another great styling, providing visual um, cues to the interaction, so to speak. Okay. Also, depending on the type of audience that you have, you may actually want to utilize title attribute on the imp input field itself. Similar to title attributes for links, we can say, let's say, let's do this, let's say name field. That means when someone hover out, hovers over the input field, the title attribute may show. So perhaps this ideal for website visitors who are elderly, although they're rather experienced interacting with websites, that option is available to you just in case you think, you know what, let me use the title attribute as well. Also, we have placeholder. Placeholder text, as we can see, your name in this example is a placeholder. And placeholder looks like this on a form field. I'll zoom in so that you see. Okay. So, in terms of web form optimization, as I've said, we want to really step back and really understand the importance of web form optimization as well. Utilize HTML5 required field so that the validation occurs right here. Also, if you're using scripts for validation, most content management systems have that option. It's server-side validation. What you want then is you want to make sure that the script that you're running doesn't burden the page load times. And if the contact page is only on a contact page, then that script shouldn't be loaded elsewhere. For form input fields, we have placeholder information. As we can see, that's perhaps at times better because each thing we place on our web form we want to make it simple but that's going to be viewed at so we want to make that interaction as easy as possible as we can see placeholder here it's saying numbers provide your phone number and so on okay then we have autocomplete option which is actually a great feature of the latest browser technologies and the mobile device revolution so to speak so it makes the form interaction much easier when we utilize 
autocomplete feature. Now, when you want to use autocomplete, all you need to do is turn on autocomplete functionality on a form element here. And then we can say autocomplete for that name field, autocomplete name. Now, in this example, we're just asking for a name. I'll show you different methods in terms of what else we can do with the name field. With the name field, what we can do is, let's have a look. We can say given name, family name, and so on. I'll share this link with you because you can do a little bit more with autocomplete feature. Okay, so that's the name field. In this example, let's autofill. What is autofill? Tell, tell, which is the telephone number. In this example, autocomplete email. And surely a message cannot be autocomplete. So definitely check out autocomplete feature, which is great as well, okay? Also, it's very important that when the message is sent, what happens? The validation is important, as we can see. You know, you need to test these things as to, okay, we're using ajax we're using jquery but when there is a validation we've scrolled the page up saying you know what one or more fields have an error please check and try again but what if someone clicked and they end up seeing this only that may still be useful but when it's scrolled and the person is taken here so these little things may be helpful for your website as well because you can accomplish this using different techniques that i won't cover here but let's just do something like this let's say this email let's say hello at ranker without the au because i'm not having the au at the moment let's say this is a test message so testing form let's conduct a test as in send the message thank you it has been set and if the viewport was this then i would be scrolled back up saying you know what message is sent so if you're taking people to a thank you page afterwards great now, before I close up, let me show you different examples here. As we've been taking this e-commerce site as an example, we can see that the button here, it can be optimized. The text here can be a little bit bigger because here the button doesn't really stand there as to, you know what, that's a button, but it is a button. We do not expect people to know how to interact with it. When we want to optimize web sites and web pages, we want to step back and say, okay, how will someone who never seen this website and web page interact with this web page? And how can we as the website owner make that interaction as simple as possible? That's the game here, right? So in that scenario, by just using perhaps coloring on the buttons perhaps a bit of box shadow css rules let's see how that button is going to look by just doing that and let's say color let's say white so now in terms of optimization of a web form that looks smarter because when someone comes here you know what let's read that great 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 but if someone placed a web form here you want people to use that right that's why it has to be placed or else it shouldn't be placed in this example 
The email could have been clickable by using mail tag. The phone number here could have been clickable by using a link. And in this scenario, we can then test. Okay, how about the borders? Let's say one pixel. Let's say red for demonstration purposes. And let's make it solid. You know, would that be smarter? Because now the person knows, okay, you know what? That's the field instead of this because i don't know where to click here do i click here at the top do i click here but when we use css and website optimization techniques on a web form you can see you want to make the interaction as easy as possible and these are the types of things that needs to be optimized another main reason for website optimization because it's the final flaw in the hierarchy of a search cycle so to speak someone searches google google shows a link they click on it if you've done everything correctly on the website then let's imagine they contacted you that means they will not go back to google and search again Google tracks all that. Google's tracking capability on planet Earth is unbelievable. They have Google Analytics. They have scripts, tracking codes. And when they combine the smartphone Google services with everything else, they understand and see things from a different perspective. So therefore, you want the searcher to come to your website, interact with it, Optimize the form as you now know how to. And then you have a conversion. That's good for business. But it's also good for search engine optimization as well. I thank you for learning with Rankia. And I'll talk with you in the next video session.